ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير حد حد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته before we begin inshallah ta'ala today's talk bi idhnillah by the permission of Allah jalla wa ala I would like to address a few things number 1 many of you have known that for quite some time we have been using backdrops backdrops are posters that we have purchased and it's not by for those who have the misunderstanding that is some type of riya then you are sadly mistaken having a backdrop is not from riya it's from the bab tahsin it is from that bab of actually doing that which is well as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the hadith katab Allah ihsan ala kulli shay that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that goodness be done in all things and the ulama they even divide from this hadith and this hadith the ulama they said that even writing having good penmanship or trying to be your best doing your best is the maqsood in all things so me having a backdrop of a bookshelf or anything like that even though i have books which i will feel as though would be real if i do show my real book cases but um alhamdulillah even using this is a way of actually decoration as a way of beautifying so to speak but it's not from real and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best the second thing that i would like to address by the permission of allah jalla wa ala is the misunderstanding that many of us have and that is when it's not an affair and inshallah ta'ala i want to go in I'm going to go into this another time. I'm really going to go into it. We already dealt with this one the night shift, alhamdulillah. And that is the misconception that many people have. We as lay people really need to know our place. You really need to know our place. We do not need to get boggled down about who's taking from who, who is associating with who, who's dealing with who, and so we shouldn't take from him. You need to learn your place. First and foremost, I don't care if someone is dealing with an organization that is upon anything if you don't know the intricacies or the details of that association. or that partnership or that dealing with then you must remember the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he said min husn al-islam al-mar'i taraku ma la ya'ni that from the goodness or the perfection of a person islam is to leave alone that which does not concern him shaykh salih wazan of the allah explained this hadith in tremendous detail if it's not a matter that's directing bearing on you that does not affect you whatsoever do you understand then you should not concern yourself with it and you should have good thoughts about one another if a person is dealing with so forth and so on. Tell you, today's talk with Ibn Allah is a reminder for myself first and foremost and for you all. And we're going to be basing it off the statement of Shaykh Uthameen Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayh, which is mentioned in his Majmur Fatawa, which is a collection of um, verdicts that Ibn Taymiyyah has given. And he mentioned a beautiful statement that's something I think that all of us can benefit by, by the permission of Allah Jalla wa Ala. And that is he said, Jihad dun nafs. He was talking about Jihad dun nafs, all right? We always hear this term, Jihad dun nafs. What is Jihad dun nafs? Okay, we have a Jihad, the Kufar love to talk about Jihad, fighting, you know, killing and so forth. But then we have this term, Jihad dun nafs, striving against oneself. He says, He said, so, and this is when he was alive, okay? So he was saying that in this time period that we find ourselves in now, we are in need of striving against ourselves. And then he gives you the reason why. He says, Because the hearts are sick. And the limbs, the limbs, the bodies, they are weak. in terms of them carrying out the acts of ibadah and he says wal qulubu mutanafira and that the hearts are scattered they are fleeting they are scattered they are not united as if you think they are they are not firm and solid as you think they are the very thing about aqida that many people don't understand is that it comes from the word linguistically aqada right and they call it like a iqal you know that thing that they use 
the Saudis they use to actually place on top of their shamak, that two little ring thing. Sometimes they take it off to whip their children. That thing that rounds around like that is like a binding thing, okay? Also, it can mean like to knot, to tie a knot into something, as Allah Jalla mentioned, and sort of the Taha, all right? But it also, linguistically, that's what it is. Something that is binding, something that is strong. So the same thing when we talk about legislatively, we're talking about an Akita that is firmly rooted. There is no possible room for doubt. So it makes the person's heart really firm. And this is how, the, we talked about this before, how the hearts will be united. Is that having that solid, firm ground within itself, being that. So he says, well, he says, وَهَذَا يَحْتَاجْ Right? إِلَى جِحَادٍ قَبْلَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ And this is the part that really touched me from the whole statement of the Shaykh, Alhamdulillah. And he said that this, those three things that he mentioned, is in need of, is in need of jihad. Striving in those areas before anything else. Before anything else. Before we begin to build, before we begin to become a community, before we begin to move on, begin to move forward, we have to address those issues that is very pressing. Okay? Now, there comes in a hadith that has been attributed to the Prophet ﷺ about the statement of jihadun asqar wa jihadun akbar. All right? And they attribute this hadith. However, this hadith is not sound. It's not authentic, okay? And that is dealing with the issue that the Prophet وسلم, he had returned back, he said to his companions when they returned back from a battle expedition, he says, رَجَعْنَا مِنَ الْجِهَادِ الْأَسْطَرِ We have returned from the minor jihad. إِلَى الْجِهَادِ الْأَكْبَرِ To the major jihad, okay? قَالُوا وَعَلْ هُنَاكَ جِهَادٌ أَعْضَمُ مِنْ جِهَادُ الْقُفَارِ and they supposed to have said in this hadith, the companions responded and they asked them, is there a jihad greater than the jihad which is waged against the non-believers? He said, naam, jihadun nafs. All right? However, this hadith is not authentic. This is not an authentic hadith. There are adhars that mention some of the companions, they used to prefer, they used to refer to jihadun nafs as jihadul kubra, as the major jihad. However, it's something must be understood. Even though this hadith is not authentic, and that the Prophet did not actually say this, it's still understood that there cannot be any jihad ala kufar, all right, without jihad al nafs. You understand? So, this is important to understand. Jihad al nafs sabikun ala jihad al kufar. That it precedes the jihad of the kufar. There's no fighting against anybody else without fighting against your own self. Why? And that is because a person cannot wage war against the kufar except after waging war against himself. Because fighting and being killed is something that is disliked by the soul. As Allah Jalla says in the Quran, Kutiba alaykum al kitab. Fighting has been prescribed for you. Why you dislike it? Allah says, Perhaps you might dislike a thing. And it is better for you. And perhaps you might love a thing. And it is evil for you. Allah knows and you know not. This is Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 216. For muhim an jihad al-a'da'i la yatimu illa ba'da jihad al-nafsa alayk. So what's important to understand is that the jihad weighs against the enemies cannot be complete unless after waging the jihad against oneself. In other words, it had to be carried out against oneself so that you can comply. All right? So that you can comply and conform towards uh, the actual jihad. So that's understood. This actually was stated by Sheikh Al-Tameen. <laughs> All right? In his Fatawa Manal or Islam, the Sheikh Al-Tameen, he actually mentioned this about understanding jihad and nafs. Okay? Now we're going to mention something real quick. Insha'Allah, and that is from Ibn Qayyim al Jaziya, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayhi. He explained that jihad is of four levels, okay? And he said, Jihad al Nafs is the first level. Wa Jihad al Shaytan is the second level. Wa Jihad al Kufar is the third level. Wa Jihad al Munafiqeen is the fourth level. Let's repeat that again. First level is Jihad al Nafs, fighting and striving against oneself. 
Second level, Jihad al-Shaytan, Shaytan, fighting against the Shaytan. Third level, Jihad al-Kufar, fighting against the enemies of Allah Azza wa Jal. The fourth level, Jihad al-Munafiqeen, fighting against the hypocrites, but bi ibnillahi ta'ala. He says, وَجِهَادُ nafs." As far as the first level, بِأَنْ يُجَاهِدَهَا عَلَى تُعَلُّمِ الْهُدَى وَعَمَلَ بِهِ بَعَدَ الْعِلْمِ وَدَعْوَةُ إِلَيْهِ وَصَبْرَ عَلَى مَشَاقُطُ الدَّعْوَةُ إِلَى اللَّهِ It consists of four things. The first thing of jihad is consists of four things. Alright? That's jihad al-nafs. When striving against oneself, four things must be present. You must first strive against yourself to educate it upon what is right. You understand? You must strive to educate yourself upon what is the right, correct path to go. What is the huda? All right? So you must strive against your ignorance, your jahal. Because the asl of insan, the asl of man, the origin of man is that they are ignorant. You don't believe me? Go ahead and look at a child that is born. The child doesn't know anything. The child needs to be taken care of, needs to be reared. It doesn't come in this world knowing things, okay? Except by the permission of Allah for those babies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have give, given them to speak at the time when they were born. And we know there are three of them. By the permission of Allah, which is correct from the authentic hadith. However, the second thing is that once it learns what's the correct way and what's the guidance, it must strive now to implement and conform to what it knows. So it must carry out those actions. Also, three, after learning and after implementing, now it must share what it knows. Okay, so now it must invite and call others to it. Right, and after that, he says, after that, then last but not least, it's the fourth level is that now it must remain firm, maintain patience upon the difficulties which will come upon the harms and tribulations that you will witness at the hands of those people whom you call. Do you understand? When you begin to call to that which is right, you're going to face some opposition, so you must have patience in regards to that calling. All right, for those who know. These four things, there is a proof for it. And I think, alhamdulillah, we should all be able to quote this proof. There is a proof for the four things that Sheikh Wasalam um, Ibn Al-Qayyim just mentioned. And that is the famous surah, which is the shortest surah in the Quran, which is known as Surah to Asr. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Al Rajeem, Bismillah Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Wal Asr. Inna Al Insan Lafi Khas. Now, this short surah, which consists of three verses, where, where is the proof for these four things? It's in the last verse. Except those who believe, that's those who strive and educate themselves upon ilm. Do you understand? Have an iman. That's those who strive to implement that which they have learned. Huh? And those who call to the truth, that's those inviting, or to also be sober, and those who also encourage one another to remain patient, that is, remain patient upon the da'wah to the call. This is the proof and evidence for the four things that you need for jihad al nafs. Do you understand that? So, Shaykh Rathamin, in his statement, he told us that jihad al nafs in his time was something that was needed before everything else. You wonder why today you cannot get right, right? You wonder why you cannot just get right. Why you can't practice the deen the way you wanted to practice it? Why you can't learn the Quran the way that you want to learn it? Why you can't learn a hadith? Why you can't do this? Why you can't do that? Then you have to go back to this basics. You understand? Where is your juhd? Where is your striving? Where is your effort that you're putting in to fight? Because it's a battle. You thought it was going to be easy just because you said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah kulli shay'in tamam. Everything was going to be complete after that. La, that's wrong. The fact that when you said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah, when you bore witness to this, now it calls for you to roll your sleeves up because now you have some juhd. You have some battle and fighting to do. As Allah says in the Quran, اِهْدِينَ الْقِرَاطُ وَالْمُسْتَقِيمُ سُرَاطُ وَالَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ As Allah says, so when you're making that dua, اِهْدِينَ الْقِرَاطُ وَالْمُسْتَقِيمُ It now becomes, guide us to the straight path, it becomes a battle. It becomes a battle. All right? It becomes a battle. So now you got to fight. Okay? So it's not 
it's not the time that you think because you say Ashhad wa la ilaha We don't have the savior syndrome. Do you, you, you understand that, right? There is no such thing in Islam. Shahada equals safety. Shahada equals safe. That is not the way that is understood, okay? Shahada is an entry level. Shahada enter you into the deen. It doesn't protect you in the deen unless you now have to live in preserving that shahada. Do you see that? So now you're going to have to fight and preserve that shahada until you meet Allah. That's the way it goes, okay? So that's why he said the first level of jihad is the jihad against yourself, all right? And that's done with four things, and we mentioned them. Knowledge, actions, calling, and patience, all right? That's the four things. So he says as far as the jihad, it's Ibn Qayyim now. He says as far as the jihad of shaitan, he says then this is jihad who ala daf'i man yulqa wa man yulqi ila abdi min ashubahati wa shahawat. Okay, وَالشَّقُوكِ قَادِحَ فِي الْإِيمَانِ SubhanAllah, pay attention to this. So, one of the main two things that the shaitan want to use to attack the son of Adam, and we must be aware of these main two things, because he's only going to come from these two avenues as the main branches, and that is going to be between doubt and desires. It's either going to try to get you to doubt that what you believe in, or he's going to try to get you to swerve off of that which you have been commanded by giving in to what your desires are. Do you understand? So you must strive to repel, to repel that, the Sheikh is saying. You must strive to repel those avenues from happening. And the best way you can do that is going to be combated with two things. Sabr wa yaqeen. Do you understand that? Patient is going to help you with fighting your desires. Your king is going to help you fight with uncertainty, meaning certainty is going to help you fight against doubt. You must. Do you understand? He says, Pay attention to this. Because see, the shaitan is not pleased unless you have a shukuku qadiha. Do you know what that is? A ugly way of complaining. An ugly form of shukuk, all right? Or doubt. Where you have this ugliness, doubt in regards to your iman, you must strive also. What? Okay, and you must also strive against those um, corrupted desires. All right, that is thrown into you from the shaitan. All right, so man has a number one enemy since the day he was here. That is the shaitan. Whether you want to believe in him or not. Whether you think that he exists or he doesn't. I mean, I know the cool saying, you know, everybody want to run around with the cool saying, you know, from usual suspects. The um, the uh, best thing or the, the most thing that the devil have can, um, convinced the people is that he, you know, is that he convinced them that he doesn't exist. So many people think that's a cool fly saying, okay? You say, okay, that he doesn't exist. No, he, we know he exists. Tayyip, Shaykh Rathamim, Rahmatullah Ta'ala, he was asked, how do we know that someone is a devil amongst the human beings? He said, if they call you to anything that is haram. They call you to anything that is evil. That's a sign. You understand? So you have to look at what's clear and what's not clear. We don't have mysticism flowing into our deeds. Everything is clear cut. Allah Jalla is the one who sent down the book. Called Gima. It's free. La iwaja. There is no crookedness. There's no ambiguity. None of that. It's strictly clear. So that you know what's the right path from the wrong path. As Allah Jalla said, "Wa nafsin wa ma sawaha, fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha, qad aflaha man zakaha, wa qad khaba man dasaha." Allah mentioned it. He says, "In the soul which we have fashioned, and we have inspired it for that to do with that which is right and that which is wrong, and indeed the soul that." Um, purifies itself is the one that is purified. The soul that saves itself is the one that is purified. The soul that doesn't, that one corrupts itself and become lowly in the in the base. Tayyip. He says now, the third level of jihad is we know jihad al kufar. Okay, wal munafiqin. The jihad, the third and the fourth level is jihad against the kufar. Is the third and jihad munafiqin is against, is against the what's the name? So think about it. Why is jihad al-munafiqeen is mentioned after mentioned last before the jihad al kufar Because the munafiqeen are worse, ashad. They are worse upon the Muslims than the kufar. The kufar, we know where they stand at. But the, 
the, the, the munafiqeen, they are the ones who take the appearance, so they are worse. So the Shaykh is mentioning here, walhamdulillah, that that's what it is. Tayyip, he says, وَجِهَادُ كُفَّارُ وَجِهَادُ مُنَافِقِينَ بِالْقَبْلِ وَالْلِسَانِ وَالْمَالُ وَالْنَفْسِ So there are four things that are utilized when fighting against these people. All right? That is with the heart, the tongue, your wealth, and your physical being. Okay? The heart, the tongue, your wealth, and your physical being. Right? He says, وَجِهَادُ كُفَّارُ خَصُّ بِالْيَدْ as far as fighting against the kufar, then this is done with the hand, okay? Specifically. And he says, as far as fighting against the hypocrites, lisan. This is done with the tongue. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, fi Surah Al Nisa, and Allah SWT says, say to them a word that touches their very inner selves. He was talking about the munafiq. Don't sugarcoat nothing for them. Be direct, Ya Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and speak a word that tests the very core of their selves. We're not fooled by your nifaq. We're not fooled by your hypocrisy. And we're not going to play, mitigate, or play around with you. No, we're going to make sure you understand what's being said. He says here, قَالَ وَأَكْمَلُوا قَلْكِ مِنْ كَمَّلُوا مَرَاتِبَ الْجِهَادِ كُلِّهَا He says the, the one who is the most complete in the creation is the one who complete these levels of jihad, all of them. Well, he says, He says, And in other words, if you look at the creation in regards to these four levels, you're going to see that they vary in their stations with Allah Azza wa Jal. All right? If they are able to complete all four of them, then they hold a high station of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the end of it, and this is collected in Zad al Ma'ad. Okay, alhamdulillah, we brought that. Now let's go into some of the statements of Shaykh they mean by using the statement of the Prophet from the commentary of Shaykh Salih Fuzan, Allah, understanding about the first thing he said. So he said, Jihad al Nafs is something that we need in our time before anything else, which I actually kind of agree with, and any one of you listening, you agree as well. Now, Jihad al Nafs, we already understand it takes four things. But the Prophet Sallallahu he said the first thing Sheikh Fuzan, I mean Sheikh Ruthaymin said in his statement, he said, فَالْقُلُوبُ marida, The hearts are sick. No one would, no one in their right mind would disagree with that. The hearts are sick. Young, old, short, whatever. Doesn't matter. Rich, poor, the hearts are sick. No one would deny this, right? The Prophet Sallallahu he says in the authenticated hadith, he said, Allah wa inna fil jasadi mudra that there is a piece of flesh in the body. If it is sound, then the whole body is sound. And if it's corrupted, then the whole body is corrupted. Right? It's the Messenger of Allah. He said, and this indeed is the heart. This piece of flesh that he was talking to or alluding to is the heart. So this is a hadith that's collected by Bukhari, by the way. Shaykh Salih Fuzani said, فَإِذَا كَانَ فِي قَالَبَ صَلَاحٌ فَإِنَّ صَاحِبُهُ يَتَوَرَّعُ عَنِ الشُّبَحَاتِ Pay attention to this. So how do we fight? How do we rid ourselves of these diseases within our hearts? He says, first and foremost, if the heart is sound, then the person who has this sound heart, يَتَوَرَّعُ عَنِ الشُّبَحَاتِ It will help him protect himself from the doubts. You understand? He says, And it won't help or protect them, and he will succumb to those doubts if he has a heart that isn't sound. He says, Because if the case, if it is sound, then he would not be concerned with the doubts. They would not move them, move him. Nor will he be concerned in engaging in those things that are impermissible. He said, He said, so this is normally what's going to happen. The heart revolves around these things. It's going to be what? Doubts trying to come at it. It's going to be desires coming at it. This is the issue of the heart. It's always going to be battling. Do you understand? He says, So what is the qalb? What is the heart? Why did the Prophet ﷺ single out the heart? And why did he make it so that everything else follows after the heart? He said, Al qalb huwa mudra, yani laham. And it's a long 
scholarly debate um, as far as the early man talking about where do the intellect actually reside is the heart the place where the intellect reside or is it in the head um, as far as being able to reason and all of that is it lies here um, Sheikh Salif was in here is describing to us that it doesn't and that seemed to be the most correct view not because he's saying it but many of the scholars of the past um, if you look into their works, they use ayats in the Quran showing that the heart is not, um, the heart is the place where the akal is at and not the other way around where the head is at. Allahu A'lam, Allah knows best. He says, Ya'ani qat He said, the heart is a piece of flesh, which here, it is it is a piece of flesh. Alati fi sator, which is in the chest. And the Prophet ﷺ said that here. He says, Ala fil jasadi mudra. That's what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, there is a piece of flesh in the body. And the body there is a piece of flesh. So here the Prophet ﷺ, even in this hadith is saying that the flesh, the heart, is what he's talking about, this place. So Shaykh Fali Fazan or Fidullah says, you may give It is this place that the person is going to be able to distinguish between what is harmful and what is beneficial. Between what is good and what is what is corrupt or what is filthy. Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah says in the Quran, فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبَصَارُ وَلَا كِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ It is not the eyesights that are blind. However, it is the hearts which are in the breast that are blind. Sadly mistaken, many of the Muslims, especially the Muslims today, they don't even know where the intellect lies. You have an intelligent conversation with somebody, you don't even know where the intellect lies at, far as your heart. You don't know if it's in your heart, it's a piece of the flesh. And it's like it shows you that we are really ignorant about our religion. But we are the first and foremost ones telling you that we stay away from bid'ah. We are the first and foremost ones who claim that we're from the people of Ahlul Hadith. But we are ignorance of the Hadith. It's, it's, it's amazing to me. I've never seen a time or a place, and this just shows you that the, it's been prophesied, where people claim to have something that they really don't. People run around day and night talking about how they're so strong and they're so adherent on the sunnah, but they're the most ignorant of the sunnah. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, no, you're ignorant. You don't even know what the sunnah is. You don't take your time out to learn the sunnah. When the last time you memorized 10 ahadith? Sheikh Salih Ali Sheikh, he said about 40 hadith. He said it takes a good student will memorize 40 hadith, which is only 42 hadiths, in three days. You try. Try memorizing 10 hadiths. When the last time you remember t memorized 10 hadith? And I ain't even talking about memorizing because what Imam Nawawi did, he took away the asani. He just gave you the brief part. He gave you the rawi, the narrator, and he gave you the takhrij, the source of that narration. He didn't even give you the four asani. He didn't give you the four senate, the whole chain, let alone just with the metan. He didn't give you that with the text. So just memorize 10 hadith. How many of us memorize 10 hadith? Knowing that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said this or said that. Or have we become men, scholar so-and-so said this, scholar so-and-so said this, student so-and-so said this, dai so-and-so said this. So this is your deen? Not call our law? Call our Rasulullah? You don't even resemble that. You don't know the ayats and you know the ahadith. Come on, man. We got to step up. You want to say you ahlu sunnah, you ahlu hadith? They learn hadith. You know that? Shaykh Salam and Taymiyyah, he written down Sunan Abi Dawood at night, man. Huh? Seven times. Using um what they called what, what they use it wasn't even a pen actually it was the ink pot you understand dipping it in writing it down our hadiths we need to understand this important points to notice he says you pay attention to this why do a person fall into shirk why do a person fall into polytheists? Why do a person fall into disbelief? Why do a person fall into corruption? It all revolves around to the heart. So if the heart is not right, then this is why it's exposed to those things and it falls into those things. If the heart is upon basira, is upon enlightenment and has understanding, then it's going to be avoided. It's going to be prevented and it's going to be protected from these things. He says, Allah wa inna fil jasadi mudra, yani kit atullah min sahira. This piece of flesh is small. But what makes it pure? What makes it sound? He said it's sound by way of fear in Allah Azza wa Jal. And fear in him upon knowledge. And fear in him upon piety. 
and if it's corrupted, he said, then it's corrupted by فَلَمْ تَكْشَ اللَّهِ Because it does not have all of Allah upon knowledge. وَلَا تَقَفُّ مِنْهُ And it does not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَمْ تُحِبُّهُ And it does not love Allah عز وجل. فَإِنَّ جَسَدَ يَفْصُدْ So the body become impure by way of it. لِيَنَّ قَلْبُ هُوَ مَلِكُ الْجَسَدْ Because the heart is the king of the body. The heart is what? The king of the body. وَإِذَا صَلَحَ الْمَلَكُ صَلَحَةُ الرَّعِيَّةِ And if it's the king is correct, then the rest of the subjects will be correct. Do you understand that? If the king is correct, then the rest of the kingdom, the rest of the subjects will be correct. But if the king is corrupted, then the rest of the kingdom will be corrupted. The rest of the subjects will be corrupted. Did you pay attention to what Shaykh Uthameen said? He said, The hearts are sick. He said, And the body limbs are weak. You can't even offer with her. You can't even offer to Hajj. You can't even offer the five prayers on, they, on, they, on their regular times. You can't even offer the act of ibadah of fasting. You can't even offer the bodies are weak, man. You know what I'm saying? The bodies are weak. Muqassira. And not just weak, because that's not what he said. He actually said F1. As a translator, I should have made sure I made it correct. He said Muqassira, which comes from the word Qassara, Yuqassiru. Muqassira means deficient. It's not just weak. It's really deficient. You understand? It's deficient. He said, and the limbs are deficient. They are falling short of the mark. Do you understand that? They're not strong. Think about it. How many orgies and sexual, all of this different stuff that we are flagged with night and day, concerned with that. How many different lusts, many different desires, all of this stuff that we are concerned with night and day. We're not even strong in terms of ibadah and sex, etc., etc. We have become people who have mimic and resemble other individuals night and day. Not even that of the Sahabas or of that of the Tabi'een or the Atba'ah Tabi'een. We don't want that. Matter of fact, if we see someone talking about sticking to that which is right, we look at him like he is strange. We look at him like he's weird. He's a weirdo. He want to be right. You sound like the people of Luke. That's how it sounds. You sound like the people of Luke. What did they say to him? Oh, this is a man. At least a, 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 a Rajul of Rashid. He just want to be a man who's right-minded. Someone who's actually thinking straight. Don't want to be around somebody who's looking at you like that. Huh? You start talking about doing right, trying to be right, and all oh, that. People look at you like you're an eyeball, man. You a nut. What they say about you? Oh, you ain't getting no yams yet? Yeah. They don't want you to be a... You can't be a virgin without being humiliated, huh? If you're a virgin, you're humiliated. Oh, you ain't getting no yams yet? It's not a lot of things, right? And this is coming from the mouths of Muslims. You know what I'm saying? And you be like, what? What is going on, right? The things that's supposed to be very disliked to you by nature because of the very essence of the thing, supposed to be disliked to you, <laughs> you don't fight against it. Rather, you find yourself sounding just like them. <laughs> the hearts are sick, man, and the body limbs are deficient. Shaykh Tamim wasn't lying. We need jihad al nafs. Everybody screaming Ramadan. Yeah, Ramadan performs that jihad al nafs. Fasting is a way of jihad, the true fasting anyway. Yani, right? It is a jihad, right? He says here, at the end, he says, فَعَلَى مُسْلِمًا يَسَلَ اللَّهَ صَلَاحَ قَلْبِهِ لِأَنَّهُ إِذَا صَلَحَ قَلْبُهُ صَلَحَ أُمُورُهُ كُلَّهَا وَإِذَا فَسَدَ قَلْبُهُ فَسَدَ أُمُورُهُ كُلَّهَا He says, so, it is common upon the Muslim to always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a soundness of his heart. And this is because if, the heart is, if his heart is sound, then the rest of his affairs will be sound. And if his heart is corrupt, then the rest of his heart, the rest of the affair, his affairs will be corrupted. For this reason, we see that the Prophet ﷺ used to frequently say, Ya Muqallib al Qulub, O turner of the hearts, Wa Basar, and the eyesights, Thabbit Qalbi ala Deenik, make my heart firm upon your deen, Fa Yakulu lahu Aisha, Radiallahu ta'ala anha, Fi Thalik, Fa Takulu lahu Aisha, Radiallahu ta'ala anha, she used to say, Fa Takulu lahu Aisha, she used to say to him, Radiallahu ta'ala anha, regarding that, and he used to say to her, Ya Aisha, wa ma you aminuni wa kuluba ibadi bayna isbaini min asabi al Rahman. Meaning that the hearts of the servants are between the two fingers of Ar Rahman. Ida arada in yukaliba kalba abdin kalabahu. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to change and alternate the heart, he can change and alternate the heart of his servants. So the hearts are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we finish this beautiful talk with the or beautiful reminder. But I'm sure Allah at the end, Shaykh Salih Fazani said, So you ask Allah Jalla wa'ala to what? 
to guide your heart. There's an ayat that this reminds me of. It comes in Surah Tawabu, Surah 64. Allah Jalla says, وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ الْقَلْبِ Whoever believes in Allah Jalla Allah guides his heart. Right? So one of the benefits of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that your heart get guided aright. He says, وَعَلَيْهِ عَيْدٍ إِنْ يَتَجَنَّبَ مَا يُسْلِدُ قَلْبِ He says also that you avoid that which corrupts the heart. يَنَّ قَلْبَ يَفْسَدُ بِالشُّبَحَاتِ وَمَعَاصِي وَبِعَقْلِ حَرَامِ وَمَعَاصِي بِجَمِيعَ عَوَاعِهَا تُسْلِدُ قُلُوبِ النَّذُرَ إِلَى الْحَرَامِ وَاسْتِمَاعُ الْحَرَامِ كُلُّ هَذَا يَفْسَدُ الْقَلْبِ And I know a lot of us don't want to hear this part, but it's the truth, even against myself. But in reality, whatever you do affects you. It affects your heart. What you listen to affects your heart. What you watch affects your heart. What you watch from those things that are impermissible affects your heart. No one can say I seen something or did something that is impermissible and by way of it my heart was strengthened. <laughs> no one can say that. No one can actually come. It's people who says that Iman is not affected by this stuff. They are the deviant sects like the Murugi right, and so forth. And those who believe in that type of ideology that uh, Iman is not affected by actions. Well, we see that it is. You put a person who's been raised around nothing but animalistic evil stuff all his life. How that person going to turn out? You tell me. How that person going to turn out? He's going to turn out right. He's been raised around all this stuff all his life, so he's, he's going to turn out right, right? He's going to deem that was correct. No, that don't make no sense. He's going to turn out corrupted because that's what he was reared upon. You understand? So everything that we do, we are gambling. And sometimes we don't realize that it's a gamble. When you look at something, you're gambling. When you're doing this, you're gambling. When you're acting this, you're gambling. You have to weigh whether or not, was it worth a part of your soul that day? Or was it not worth a part of your soul? And it's a jihad. That's why he said jihad do not is needed before anything goes. Because it's a jihad. Who don't want to sit back, put their feet up for a minute and just chill, right? Just lamp out, chill, no worries. Who don't want to do that? But there's a place for that. This isn't the place, but there's a place for that. But we have to fight jihad to get to that. And that's what he's saying, that jihad do not is needed, man. We got to strive to really try to be more better. Who wants to sit around all day? You know how we hate class? We can't wait till the school is over. The class bell ring and this time is over. Who want to sit around cranking their head all day? And this slam, you got to memorize, right? Think about it. Who want to do that? Who want to be doing that? Sit around memorizing all day. We in class now. Go over and look up these five or seven words. Give me the root where these words from. Memorize this passage. Who want to be doing that, right? But you have jihad on nafs. You have to memorize these things. You have to go and you have to fight yourself against yourself to become better. You're not going to become better because you just said the Shahada. You're not going to become better because you went to mash it so-and-so. You're not going to become better because you're screaming at the top of your mouth, you ahlu hadith, and you don't mess with bid'ah. People takes me out. Most people you find that they don't mess with bid'ah, they listen to a lot of mufti me. And I'm not being, I'm not being smart. I'm just being honest. Most people you find, they, 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 they celebrate in birthdays. Most people you find saying that. I'm talking about in the West. Let's be real. Call a spade a spade. Most people you find talking about, yeah, I don't deal with the people of Bidah, but they, they definitely got the birthday going on. And what do they do, especially when an actor or, or a musician or someone pass away or, or someone who's an activist pass away? They participate by doing what? Sharing their quotes and everything. What do you call that? Huh? What do you call it? You sharing a quote of a man who passed away, right? You say, okay, I'm not selling his birthday, but now I want to remember him just when they were asking to remember him, right? So I want to share his quote, share his passions and things like that. What you call it? It's a form of celebration, man. You don't understand that? And then people don't understand how weak they are, but hey, leave it up to them. They got the correct Aikida, right? No, something is wrong. Something is wrong. It's a jihad, man. You got to fight against your nefs. Stop thinking you have a riven when you have it. Stop letting people think this because you got Sahih Bukhari in your house or you got this book or you got that book that you're there. No, you're not there. You have to actually put it into your hearts. Until these things become despicable and hated to you, that's when you know you're there. Until you no longer like those things and you avoid those things, that's when you know you're there. And if you still have a sympathy for it or some type of empathetic or some type of empathy for these things and you're still open and subjected to it, you're not there. So you need to tell yourself you need to keep making jihad. You need to be big and jihad. Some days you're going to win and some days you're going to not. I don't want to hear about, I can't take from so-and-so because he deal with so-and-so. First of all, who are you? You don't even know the issue. Before you start talking about who deal with this and who deal with that, you haven't studied any issue to know whether or not he's guilty about association. Is that a principle in Islam? Is guilty about association a principle in Islam? You don't even know. But yet you heard Fulan and Alain tell you this. But yet and still, you're sitting over here dealing with Fulan, who's a non-believer. But should I say you guilty by association? 
that you over here quoting, passing this quote on or this quote on? Should I say you guilty by association? But you want to say your brother is guilty by association. Your sister is a guilty by association, right? And you don't even understand these principles, man. Stop this stuff. From the goodness of a person in Islam is leaving alone that which is not concerning. And this is what we wanted to bring. Last but not least, I will remind you of that beautiful statement. Shaykh Tamini says that jihad is something that is needed, especially in our times. We are in need of jihad and nafs. That's the type he's talking about. And he also said that you know, the hearts are sick, the bodies are deficient, the body limbs are deficient. And he said the hearts are mutanafirah, that the hearts are scattered, they are not united. And he said that this is something that is needed. Before anything else, we ask Allah Jalla wa ala to allow whatever we said be a reminder for myself and for you all, and that whatever we said that was incorrect is definitely from ourselves, our nafs, and also from um, the shaitan. What we said is correct. It's from Allah Jalla wa ala. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi. Ash had one day la ilaha illallah. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh.